Hi, my name is Eric Sanquist. I'm the chair of the Department of Astronomy at San Diego State University, coming to you from extreme isolation near the Pleiades. My purpose today is just to give you a little introduction to the department and uh, why you should come here for your educational experiences. We hope you love astronomy and we want to show you how much we love it too. So one of the unique things about the department here is that we are the only independent astronomy department in the California state system. We also have our own research facility, Mount Laguna Observatory, which we'll hear about a little bit more later on. But we pride ourselves in particular in being able to teach really, really well, but also to give students the opportunity to see what research is actually like and to participate in it themselves. And this is an important thing for maturing as a person and as a scientist. We hope that this interests you a lot and not just the chance of doing research, but some of the topics that we actually have available here at San Diego State. So what I wanna do is just give you a little introduction to some of the faculty that we have in our department and the topics that they enjoy working on. So Bill Welsh and Jerry Rose have been working on detecting planets around other stars and specifically detecting planets around pairs of stars. It's completely <clears throat> legitimate to say that they are some of the world's experts in this field of finding planets around these kinds of systems and to get some idea about whether life potentially could have come into existence around them. If you're interested in learning about planets and life around other stars, it's possible to do that kind of work here at San Diego State. Jerry Rose, on top of the uh, planet work that he does, is also interested in black holes, and he studies black holes that are in orbit around other stars that helps you learn more about how the, the black hole itself actually works. So if you're interested in black holes, you know, we've got somebody here that can scratch that itch. Me personally, I am interested in how sort of normal stars work deep inside and using the characteristics of stars to date different pieces of this gigantic Milky Way that we exist in and that all the stars that you see in, in the night sky exist in. If you're interested in how stars work, we've got somebody here who can uh, get your interest. We've also got a couple of experts in supernova explosions. Doug Leonard works on the explosions of massive stars, looking through historical images to find, learn about the stars before they explode and to look at the supernova explosions themselves to learn about the mechanics of these gigantic explosions. We also have Robert Quimby, who is the director of our observatory. And um, there on the left is an example of a video showing uh, a distant galaxy with a star exploding in it. And he's interested in particular in the most luminous and the most exotic kinds of supernova explosions and what those can tell you about how the universe itself has changed throughout its history. So if you like really big explosions, we've got people here that can help uh, educate you on that subject. And finally, our newest hire, Kate Rubin, is interested also in the very early parts of the universe and how these gigantic galaxies were assembled from, from gas that collapsed to make the galaxy, the swirls of stars and all the stars in them. So if you're interested in learning about how galaxies were made or how the universe was in its early stages, we've got somebody here who can lead you through that process too. What I'm trying to get across to you is that there's a lot of research being done here. And if you come to San Diego State, you will have the chance to do research and to learn more about the universe at a very, very deep level. So please think it over, but uh, I will turn things over to Jerry Rose, who is our undergraduate advisor, and he'll tell you a bit more about our program. Hello, I'm Jerome Morris, and I'm the astronomy undergraduate advisor, and I'm here to give you a brief overview of our undergraduate curriculum. 
San Diego State has the only campus out of the 23 campuses in the California State University system that has a complete academic degree in astronomy. We offer both Bachelor of Arts degrees and Bachelor of Science degrees. The Bachelor of Arts degrees might be suitable for students who pursue careers in education, science writing, certain government and academic positions. The Bachelor of Science degree might be suitable for students who wish to go on to obtain master's or PhD degrees, or students who wish to pursue technical careers in industry, government, and astronomical observatories. Speaking of careers in astronomy, the American Astronomical Society has an excellent resource page. So check them out at aas.org careers. For our Bachelor of Arts degree, the pre-major consists of three semesters of calculus, three semesters of introductory calculus-based physics, and Astronomy 201, which is the Astronomy for Science majors course. The university sets a foreign language requirement for the Bachelor of Arts degree, and there's also an upper division writing requirement. The upper division part of the Bachelor of Arts degree consists of 27 units in both physics and astronomy, including Astro 350, 440, and 450, Physics 350, and Physics 354, and then an upper division math course called Math 342A. In addition to those required courses, three additional elective courses in physics or astronomy are required. The Bachelor of Arts degree has no required minor to it. Now for the Bachelor of Science degree, there are three semesters of calculus in the pre-major, three semesters of introductory calculus-based physics, and the Astronomy 201 course. Now unlike the Bachelor of Arts degree, the Bachelor of Science degree has no requirement for a foreign language, but it still has the upper division writing requirement. Now the upper division part of the Bachelor of Science degree is a little bit more involved. There are 36 upper division units in physics and astronomy including Astro 350, 440, 450, and also Astro 498 A and B, which is a senior research project. The physics courses that are required include Physics 350, Physics 354, Physics 360, and 400 A. And there are two required math courses, Math 342 A and Math 342 B, and then four additional courses selected in either physics and astronomy. Now, in addition to these math and to these physics and astronomy courses, a math minor is also required. And the math minor would consist of an additional upper division math course after you've completed the three semesters of calculus and then math 342A and math 342B. Now, some briefly some tips for success. When you're looking at the pre-major, the most important course in the pre-major is math 150, which is calculus one. Math 150 serves as a prerequisite to Physics 195, which is the first introductory physics course, and also to Astro 201. The ideal time to take Math 150 is the fall semester of your freshman year. Now keep in mind the mathematics department requires proof of prerequisites for Math 150, and this is usually Math 340, uh, excuse me, Math 141, which is pre-calculus, or a math placement exam. In addition to getting on the right track with regarding your math, some other just general tips in your first couple of years is get to know your advisors. You'll have a general education advisor. There are advisors to the College of Sciences, specifically in the College of Science Student Success Center, and also the department advisor, which is me. In addition to all this, it's a good idea to get involved with fellow students by joining clubs, for example, the Schwartz Astronomical Society or other types of clubs. Any questions or concerns, please contact me via email at j-o-r-o-s-z at scsu.edu. So thanks for listening and stay tuned for Robert Quimby, who is the director of the Mount Laguna Observatory, and he'll give you a brief introduction to the observatory. Okay, thank you. Oh, hi there. My name is Robert Quimby, and I am a professor in SDSU's Department of Astronomy. I'm also the director of the Mount Lagoon Observatory, which I'm sure you know all about. Oh, well, in that case, allow me to tell you about one of SDSU's hidden jewels, 
Like other major universities, San Diego State has its own observing facilities right on campus. So right here, next to the Department of Astronomy, there are some domes you'll see on the roof here. But this is not the observatory that I want to tell you about today. These are great facilities, but the facility I want to talk to you about today, the Mount Lagoon Observatory, is actually 50 miles to the east, out here in the mountains, where the skies at night are much darker. You'll find the observatory out here in Mount Laguna, which is well outside of the major metropolitan area. The observatory is situated in five acres of land in the Cleveland National Forest. We have multiple research telescopes, and we also have a telescope which is dedicated for education and public outreach activities. The observatory is not open to the public, but if you are a student at SJSU, you may have the opportunity through one of our classes to actually go to the observatory and observe with our telescopes. At the heart of the observatory's public outreach activities, and one of the key features offered by our courses for non-majors, is the opportunity to look through the 21-inch Bowler Telescope. So this telescope is dedicated for eyepiece observing, and when I say 21 inches, what I mean is there's a mirror in here that collects light, and that mirror has a diameter of 21 inches. So this is what most people would consider a large telescope, but actually at the observatory, this is one of the smaller telescopes we have. Through this telescope, students have the opportunity to, to see craters on the moon, the rings of Saturn, the moons of Jupiter, and objects that are simply too faint to be seen from the city lights, like nebula and even other galaxies. And as this time-lapse video of the skies above the observatory shows, even when they're not looking through one of our telescopes, students can just go outside and look up and be treated to sights that they may never have seen before, including the Milky Way, and satellites orbiting high above the Earth. Students wise enough to major in astronomy will be trained in the use of our 40-inch telescope, that's a one-meter aperture telescope, and they may have the opportunity to use some of our other research facilities as part of faculty research programs or even for their own thesis projects. Our research facilities include the 40-inch or one-meter telescope, the 50-inch or 1.3-meter Phillips Claude telescope, and a new ultra-wide field survey telescope called Everyscope. At the junior and senior level, we offer courses for astronomy students to acquire and analyze data from our 1-meter telescope, and they can use this information to derive such things as the age and distance to star clusters. For our graduate students, we offer a course in astronomical techniques in which the students can observe the brightness of supernova over time and learn about how to fit models to those data to derive parameters such as the peak brightness. And then using some Python code that the students develop, they can use that information to determine what the expansion rate of the universe is. And from this, they can actually estimate the age of the universe. I hope that gives you some idea of what we do at the Mount Lagoon Observatory. And remember that while others may promise you the stars, at the Mount Lagoon Observatory, we deliver. Up next, Professor Doug Leonard will tell you about the Astronomy Department's outreach and public education activities. Thanks, Robert. And I do hope everyone's enjoying their virtual SDSU visit with the Department of Astronomy. I'm Doug Leonard. I am a professor in the Department of Astronomy, and I also spearhead our department's efforts to engage the wider San Diego community in astronomy-related outreach and education. As an undergraduate in our department, there are lots of ways to get involved in outreach and educating the public about the wonders of our universe. The centerpiece of our efforts is our 40-seat Spitz Planetarium. It was originally built in 1958. It's still our workhorse, bringing in uh, hundreds of people every year, uh, do over dozens of outside groups each year as well. Here you see folks entering our planetarium and once inside, and here you see younger images of myself and Professor Zaros and Welsh inside the planetarium as well. As an undergraduate, you can get trained to be either an assistant for our shows, or if you're ambitious, a presenter. We get requests from many area schools and other groups throughout the year for our planetarium shows. Planetarium shows are great, but you're stuck inside. We're astronomers. We like to be outside and show we also provide star parties to groups, including those that happen during the day, where you can only look at one star, the sun, safely through telescopes equipped with 
solar filters, and of course also at night as well. We have a cadre of 10-inch Mead telescopes in addition to an exquisite three-inch uh, Questar telescope. We also hold these star parties uh, all over campus and off campus as well, and especially at our rooftop platform next to the domes of the buildings you saw in Professor Quimby's introduction. The latest introduction to the latest addition to our outreach is an immersive virtual reality system complete with many pairs of goggles where people can glide through the universe using custom-made demonstrations that we develop right here at San Diego State University. There's also good old-fashioned visits from schools where we give talks to area students either at our campus or at their schools. And we always participate in campus-wide events where our students staff our uh, astronomy table here at Explore SDSU itself. Usually this day finds us staffing this table out on a crowded walkway in addition to giving planetarium shows, virtual reality experiences, and solar telescope viewing as part of the concurrent science sampler. So if you come to San Diego State University, you can get involved in all of these sorts of educational activities. Um, along these same lines, we also have a very active astronomy club. It's known as the Schwartz Astronomical Society. It meets regularly throughout the year. They go on lots of trips together. Here they are at the Griffiths Observatory. You don't even have to be an astronomy major to join. That's a little secret. And a lot of our outreach activities involve partnerships with the Schwartz Astronomical Society. They have a Facebook page as well, if you would like to get in contact with them. In fact, you've already met the current president of the Schwartz Astronomical Society, Jordan Ely, who will now tell you more about it. Hi everyone, my name is Jordan Ely. I'm a fourth year astronomy major, but right now I'm coming to you as president of the Schwartz Astronomical Society. So, when I came into San Diego State and I was in all my prereq classes, I was like, wow, why am I the only one suffering? It's because I wasn't. Um, there are a lot of astro people who are taking the exact same prereqs as you are. And SAS provides that space for you to be able to connect with those people and you'll know them for the next four or five years, however long you're here. And those relationships will be essential moving into your later classes. But that's enough on the academic side. We're also the astronomy club for campus. So it's not just a bunch of astro majors, it's physics. It's basically, we have people from all over the College of Sciences. And it's just a place for people who love astronomy to talk about astronomy. We'll have discussions about new data releases that came out. Like if Hubble released a really cool calendar, like it's wonderful. We have adventures that we go on. We went up to Griffith Observatory, Palomar. We have MLO, like it's right there. So we'll do overnights there too. And there's just a ton of different resources that are available to us. And SAS is here to make sure that you enjoy that fully. Thanks, Jordan. Now I'm going to turn you back to our department chair, Eric Sanquist, to close out virtual SDSU visit with the astronomy department. Thank you. So to summarize some of the top reasons for coming to San Diego State, the chance to be part of exciting research in cutting edge areas of astronomy, the chance for students to use research instruments and telescopes, and teaching, getting excellent teaching at the college level and the chance to pass on your knowledge to the next generation of scientists.